guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video where I wanted to discuss the five most common health problems you'll probably come across when owning rats and mice. So rats and mice, although they are two entirely separate different species, they are both rodents and they're both commonly kept as pets and also as lab animals. So because of this, they can be prone to some common shared health issues that you may come across in your time of owning them. Even rats and mice from responsible ethical breeders still unfortunately are prone to some of these issues. It does decrease the chances of them happening slightly but they can and they do still pop up and it is really important to be aware of them and know what to expect. Before we get started and jump into some of these most common health issues, please be aware that I'm not a vet although I can sit here and tell you about some of the most common issues. I can't diagnose your pets, I can't treat them, I can't really do too much behind my computer screen so please don't ask me for medical advice in the comments. Of course you can ask and I can try to point you in the right direction but ultimately if you have a sick rat or mouse, take them to a vet, find a local vet in your area, there's not too much I can do from behind my computer screen so please don't ask me to fix your rats or mice, that is not what I'm here for, I'm here to educate you and make you aware of these problems so you can deal with them and get help and advice from an actual vet. So number one is of course respiratory infections, if you own rats or mice you are probably going to come across this in your time of owning them because they are so common. So respiratory infections is caused by a bacteria called mycoplasma and pretty much all rats and mice carry this bacteria inside of them. It is passed from the mother to the young when they give birth and pretty much every single rat and mouse carries this and has this inside of them. So most of the time this bacteria will lie kind of dormant inside of them until it's triggered by something like stress or being attacked by another rat or they can also be stressed by coming into a new environment. That can also trigger the bacteria, the mycoplasma, to cause symptoms. Also, if you're using a bedding that is dusty or contains fennels, these can also trigger the bacteria to cause a respiratory infection. Also, if you're using any aerosols in the room, so deodorants, air fresheners, lighting a candle, smoking, vaping, anything scented in the room, or if you have a buildup of ammonia in your tank or your cage because you've not cleaned them regularly enough, this can also trigger a respiratory infection and cause them to suffer from symptoms. So firstly you can have an upper respiratory infection, early symptoms of this are sneezing and also excess porphyrin around their eyes and the nose. This can progress and lead on to a lower respiratory infection and the symptoms of this are loud, rattly breathing, sometimes I describe it as sounding like a pigeon cooing or also just hunched up with their fur raised up, looking really uncomfortable. These are all some of the symptoms of a lower respiratory infection, which really needs treatment. <laughs> if left untreated, this can lead on to respiratory distress in the rat, where the rat is kind of side sucking, really having a hard time breathing, and they're also open mouth breathing and kind of gasping for air. If you see a rat like this, this is an emergency situation and they need to see a vet as soon as possible but it can also lead on to things like pneumonia and ultimately death. So although you can't make the mycoplasma bacteria completely go away or go away at all, you can however treat the symptoms. So you'll probably hear a range of different at-home treatments floating around the internet, things like feeding them dark chocolate or taking them into the shower and using the steam. These things can either be a short-term fix or they can also do more harm than good, so if you have a rat that has a respiratory infection, take them to a vet, get them a course of antibiotics to really fight the infection. It is usually recommended to use a combination of a few different types of antibiotics and do this for an extended period of time that's longer than a week to really fight the infection, but I'm not going to sit here and give you the dosages or the specific types of antibiotics to use because that's not my job, I'm not a vet. And I will leave, however, a link in the description to a really good website giving you more information about the treatment options and the different medications available, written by actual vets you might find useful. And I definitely refer to this website all the time and it's really, really helpful. Other things you can do if you suspect your rat has a respiratory infection is look at the environment you're keeping them in. Is it kept clean? Is there any areas that there may be ammonia buildups? Are they peeing in the hammocks and you're not cleaning them enough? Or are they peeing in one particular hide that gets really, really stinky and builds up, that can cause them to have a respiratory infection, or if you're using a bedding that is dusty, sometimes I will use a bedding for months, and then I'll get one batch that is just really, really dusty, and it just triggers them to start sneezing. I've had that recently and it's so frustrating because 
you trust a certain bedding and then they just change it and it's not just free anymore so check the beddings check the environment and make sure there's not too much ammonia building up unfortunately for some rats this can be a chronic ongoing issue they have for their entire lives until it does become too much for them and this is obviously something to discuss with your vet but some rat owners do go on to have to buy or make a nebulizer just to handle and deal with their rat symptoms also, I apologise if I just keep referring to rats in this video. I do mean to keep saying rats and mice because they're both equally prone to all of these issues. But I think because I'm sat so close to the rat cage, I just keep assuming this video is entirely about rats and it's not. So rats and mice, whenever I say just rats, ignore me. <laughs> so the next issue that rats and mice are very, very prone to is tumours, cysts and abscesses. So rats and mice are so prone to various different lumps and bumps throughout their lifetime and these can be quite tricky sometimes to tell if it's an abscess or if it's even worse a tumour so if you're not sure the best bet is to take them to a vet and they should be able to find out for you. So starting with the less serious of the two abscesses can appear pretty quickly almost overnight sometimes. They may also be there with a scratch or a scab Sometimes not though, so it can be really hard to figure out if they're an abscess or if they're a tumour. And again, like I said, if you're not too sure, take them to a vet. You can help abscesses to pop on their own at home by warm compressing them. I just do this by taking a warm cloth and heating this up with warm water and then pressing this against the lump multiple times a day for a couple of days and then it should come to a head and pus will come out if it is an abscess, which is just delightful but then you can flush this out and clean this with salt water and then they should be fine. If you're not too sure or you're doing this and it's not working I would recommend taking them to the vets and they can help you with this. They can poke them with a needle just to find out what kind of contents is inside whether it's an abscess or whether it's a tumour and especially if you have a mouse that has an abscess I probably wouldn't feel as confident trying to warm compress this for myself just because they are so small and it's really hard to get direct attention to the area so with mice especially I would just take them to the vets but with rats I've had various different rat abscesses and they are disgusting but it is quite a relief when you find out it's an abscess and not a tumour and the stuff comes out but it just stinks and it's disgusting but one of those things you just have to deal with with rats and also with mice. If your rat however has a lump or an abscess on their face or close to a bone I would take them directly to the vets just to get extra advice because these areas can be more prone to infections and bone infections and they can be quite nasty so if you have anything around the face area I would just go directly to the vets and don't try to mess with it yourself. So moving on to tumours, rats and mice are both very very prone to tumours unfortunately these can be internal, external, you can also get things like pituitary tumours which obviously you can't see because it's inside of them and these can cause symptoms like and steadiness and able to hold their food and eat and these are really really awful to watch a rat or a mouse go through. Unfortunately even rats or mice from reputable good breeders can still experience tumours. It is something they are still working on to improve the health of their lines and the rats and the mice but they can still pop up usually less so and usually towards the older age but some younger rats and mice can also experience tumours and that's really sad. It is ultimately your decision whether you think it's worth paying the money to remove a tumour on your rats and mice because you do have to weigh up their age and their ability to survive and get through the surgery and also sometimes the tumours can and do grow back after you've spent hundreds on removing them. In a couple of weeks they can have another one pop up and this can be really disheartening. Generally if you have a younger rat or mouse that's say for example a year old, if you remove that tumour you can give them another really good year or two years of life but say for example you have a two year old rat that has a few other health issues and also a tumour, sometimes it's not worth putting them through the stress of that surgery and also the month long or months long recovery process because they might only have another month left and it's not always worth stressing them and also risking them not making it through the surgery so that is something to discuss with your vets and weigh up whether it's worth putting them through that kind of surgery or not. Usually with rats and mice it's not going to be the thing that kills them, it is going to severely affect their quality of life, it will impact their movement, their ability to interact with other rats and mice, their ability possibly to eat sometimes and it can be incredibly uncomfortable and painful for them so although it might not be the thing that kills them it isn't fair to leave them like this when it gets bigger and starts impacting their quality of life so when it gets to this point the kindest thing for them is to let them go and put them to sleep. 
So the third biggest issue you might come across when owning rats and mice is skin issues. They can go bold out of nowhere. They can also be scratching themselves all the time and causing little skin lesions. This is mostly gonna be caused by parasites, things like mites. Also, lice and fleas are less common in rats and mice, but they do sometimes still happen. So I think something that people don't know is that rats and mice do naturally have some level of mites on them, and these can normally not cause any problems but they can start causing issues if your rat's immune system is lowered, if they're stressed or they have an illness, this can cause the mites to increase and start causing symptoms. So the scabs from them excessively scratching themselves are usually found on the back of their neck, on their backs or on their ears and other extremities, but this can be easily treated with an anti-parasite solution. You can either buy this from a pet store or you can go directly to your vets and they will supply you with it based on your rat your mouse's weight Either is fine, but just make sure it has either selamectin or ivermectin in the solution. They can also have other skin issues, things like ringworm, staph infections. These are highly contagious to humans, so just be careful if you notice any of these on your rats or your mice. These are best treated by taking them to the vets because they are a little bit more complicated and complex than mites and things like that, but they can and they do happen. And just be careful because they are highly contagious Speaking from experience. Mice in particular are pretty notorious for being chronic scratches even after they're all healed up and you've treated the issue whether it's mites or something else even after that has been dealt with. They kind of become addicted and obsessed with scratching themselves and it can be pretty hard to get them to stop so just be aware sometimes even if you've done everything you can to stop them sometimes they become almost addicted and get in this vicious cycle of scratching, hurting themselves and just continuing so that's also something to be aware of and can be incredibly frustrating and hard to deal with. So the next thing rats and mice can be quite prone to is kidney issues. These are mostly going to appear in the older age but can appear in younger rats and mice too. This can either be progressive with kidney degeneration or it can also be a sudden onset of kidney failure. So you may notice them drinking more, losing weight, their hair thinning and falling out or just being more lethargic alongside other symptoms. You may also see hind leg degeneration in your rats or your mice alongside this. It is sometimes caused by arthritis or nerve degeneration, but it is thought to also be linked to the kidneys. And some people do see this alongside each other. So this may be things like them dragging their feet or stumbling and eventually them fully dragging their back legs or their tail behind them. Treatment for issues in their kidneys is mostly just about managing their symptoms. Vets might also want to try giving them medication, things like a diuretic or something, just to give them a bit more time. You can also make a few lifestyle changes to your rats or your mice, things like making sure they're not too overweight, making sure they're not consuming too much protein in their diet, so making sure to monitor their protein intake. Also, you can make sure they're getting enough food and water. Really make sure they're getting enough fluids in them, even if you have to syringe them water or give them watery baby foods. Things like this can help them with their symptoms and just help them in their end of life care. I also tend to supplement my older rats and mice with a powder called Epacotine. This is available in a link in my description and this just aids them and helps them with their kidney function. And I tend to just give my older rats and mice this as they're getting towards the age where they might have issues with their kidneys and also if they do start experiencing any of these symptoms, I will also give them the Epacotine powder alongside any other medication that the vet is advising to give them. I think the camera angle just changed because I had to change my SD card, but the fifth and final thing I wanted to talk about is a condition called pyometra, and although it's only applicable to female mice and rats, I thought it was really important to talk about this because it can be quite a sudden and expensive thing to have to treat, especially if it happens at a weekend and you have to go to an emergency vet. So female rats and mice do not naturally have periods like humans. If your female rat or mouse is bleeding down there, that is not a good sign and that is definitely not normal. So pyometra in rats and mice is a condition where the uterus is filled with pus and sometimes this is accompanied by bleeding. And if this happens, it's a very serious condition and it needs treatment straight away. So if left untreated, this can lead to things like sepsis, infection, shock, and your rat can die pretty quickly or your mouse can die pretty quickly. So this needs treatment straight away even if it's a holiday, a weekend, if you leave this too long, your rat could die from infection. So a very, very serious condition. 
So the vets might want to try them on a course of antibiotics, but the most common treatment to save their life ultimately is going to be to spay them and remove all of their reproductive organs, which for a mask can be quite an intense surgery. They might possibly not make it through that, but it is something that is necessary to try to save their life. And this can happen whether it's a weekend or whether it's a holiday like Christmas Day. This has to happen as soon as possible to try to save their life. So that's why I always, always recommend having money behind you before you get a pet like a rat or a mouse because even if it's not pyometra, it's gonna be a respiratory infection, it's gonna be a tumor or something. There's always an expense when it comes to rodents that are so prone to health issues. So always make sure you have a vet fund because these things can pop up out of nowhere and they can be quite expensive. So that was just a quick overview of some of the most common health issues you might come across when owning mice or rats. Probably not that quick because this video is probably about 20 minutes long but I will leave more information and useful resources in the description going more into depth about each of these conditions and the treatment options available just in case you need it. It's all going to be there in the description. Of course this is not all of the health issues that rats and mice can suffer with. There are so many that I can't even list them all in a video unfortunately but these are just some of the most common health issues and don't forget if you have any questions or queries or you're really worried about one of your rats or your mice please take them to a vet to a professional that can see them in person diagnose them and treat them i can hear crumble boggling above me please take your rats or your mice or your vets if you're worried but of course i can try to help you oh my god try to help you in the comments this is chaos i've sat here the whole video thinking oh it might be nice i might come out and they've been fast asleep the whole time and now they're trying to murder themselves anyway don't forget to subscribe i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and i hope it's been useful and i will see you in my next video bye say thanks for watching